What's up guys? Welcome to the channel. I am here in my car on the way to my watchmaker, Bonkhauser Jewelry in Sugar House, Utah. And uh, I'm wearing the Speedmaster today. I just bought this Sapphire sandwich. So of course I have to have it on wrist. And we're taking a different Omega to the shop that belongs to a friend of mine that lives out of state. There are no watchmakers in his area that he trusts and his Seamaster just stopped working uh, recently. So we're gonna go take it to my watchmaker, my guy. We're gonna see what the issue is and then we're gonna get it taken care of. We're gonna repair it. That's part of uh, the cost of ownership is occasionally servicing, repairing, replacing parts. And uh, I'm gonna share the experience with you guys. So uh, let's get to it. It's in a beautiful part of town. Sugar House is really, it's kind of a neat place. There's some good restaurants over here. And uh, the name of the store is Fonkhauser Jewelry. And uh, his name's Chris, Chris Howard. He's a one man show here at his, uh, at his store. He's always taking good care of me. So let's go in. Hey guys, so I left the shop and I wanna do a quick update. I left the watch with Chris and uh, he's an awesome guy, runs a fun shop. I'll drop in some pictures of some of the fun clocks and items that he has in his shop here, Bonkhauser Jewelry. And so he opened up the watch and I filmed him opening up the case back. I saw that uh, the watch carries a Faraday shield or a Faraday cage for the movement, which I had no idea that they did. That's really cool. I, I learned something today. So anyways, Chris, he took off the, he took off the case back. He had a, a quick look through the movement just to see if there's something obvious, like a blockage with the gear train, a loose screw. And there was nothing uh, just grossly apparent that was keeping the watch from running. So I dropped it off and uh, he's going to take a closer look. Uh, he doesn't anticipate it to need a full service, which with Chris, with that movement, would cost $275 plus parts. So he's just, you know, he's gonna take a look, he's gonna find the issue, he's gonna repair the issue. If it's just, you know, replacing a mainspring, a faulty mainspring or something, it could be less than $100 just for the part and his time. So I will keep you posted, uh, Robert, the owner of the watch, and I hope you guys enjoy, you know, following along with, the repair of this piece and the cost of ownership long-term of some of these watches that we loved. So uh, to be continued. Wrist check, sometime later as we do the update, I am wearing the Speedmaster Professional Sapphire Sandwich today. And I can't remember, I think this was the watch that I was wearing earlier on uh, when we did the beginning part of this video. But anyways, I have the Seamaster back from uh, from my watchmaker back from Fonkhauser Jewelry. I wanna do an update here, tell you guys exactly what happened and what ended up uh, taking place. Before I do that, let me show you this paperwork here from Omega from the Swatch Group. You guys can see in April of 2017, Robert paid for a full service or a maintenance service as it's uh, written here on this invoice and he also had the links polished which it looks like Omega didn't charge for that so he ended up spending 550 about three years ago uh, to get a full service and here is the replaced parts that Omega sent back to him looks like the gaskets were replaced the helium release crown and the main crown were replaced the spring bars some of the bezel components were all replaced. And you know what? He was very happy back in 2017 when he got a freshly serviced and polished Seamaster from Omega. It was running well until 
um, you know, just a few months ago when it just would not keep time and it would not keep power. So instead of sending it back to Omega and spending another, you know, $500, $600 on a complete factory service, and, and again, I have to mention, it was just outside that service warranty of two years when uh, the trouble took place. So that's frustrating as a watch fan to, uh, you know, just get past the warranty and then have more issues. So I can understand that frustration and the lack of desire to send it back to Omega for additional work to be done in diagnostics. So instead of that, he reached out to, uh, to me because I have a great contact with the trusted watchmaker, Chris Howard of Funkhauser Jewelry. And so he opted to go for the independent route, which for the majority of work that needs to be done, I would recommend going with an independent watchmaker as opposed to the brand. I would go back to the brand if it's under warranty, but you know what? I say that because I have a great watchmaker and let me give you the update here. So Chris, he looked for obvious blockages in the gear train, something that was very easy to see, and he did it as I waited at his shop just to see if there was a quick, obvious fix to save Robert a little bit of money, save some time, and that's something I appreciate, and that's something that you'll get with a good watchmaker. Now, unfortunately, there was nothing obvious, um, you know, what uh, causing this watch not to keep power not to keep time. So after exhausting all of his options, which I appreciate, he did recommend the full service, which again is disappointing when Robert just paid for a full service, you know, three years ago through Omega. So fortunately with an independent watchmaker, you're gonna be spending less on the, uh, on the work. So I believe Chris ended up charging, I wanna say it was under $300 for the full service of the Cal 1120 within this watch. And he is a Swatch certified and trained watchmaker. So he used all replacement parts from Swatch. Everything was done according to the trainings. And uh, you know, that's great. To be able to get that work done, save some money and get good customer service from an independent watchmaker who can call you up and say, hey, I found the problem. It was the pallet fork. It wasn't, you know, oscillating too. Uh, the complete extremity and that was causing, um, you know, this and that and be able to have it explained to you. I think that is, is just a great thing as a watch fan. So that's what ended up happening with this. Chris performed the full service. It was the pallet fork and the bridge that was causing some issues. And so now that's rectified. It's keeping perfect time. And uh, Robert now has a two-year warranty through Funkhauser Jewelry, which I would have more faith in personally than the, the two-year service warranty from Swatch, from Omega. I don't want to come across as too harsh on Omega on Swatch, but you know what? Things happen. And it doesn't matter if you have an Omega. It doesn't matter if you have a Seiko or a micro brand or a Rolex. Occasionally, you will have issues. You will have disappointing and frustrating things that take place with your watch ownership, and that's part of using mechanical watches and uh, and wearing them. Uh, when you buy a watch, you're not just buying the watch, you're committing to the upkeep and the maintenance through the years that you own the watch. And so Robert's experiencing that with this Omega. All watches, you know what, they'll come up with problems from time to time. Every mechanical watch will need servicing at some point. And so it's it's just great to have a trusted watchmaker to do that work, to do it properly, and uh, to save you a little bit of money as well. So guys, if you don't have a trusted watchmaker in your home city or wherever you are in the United States, I will put a link to Funkhauser Jewelry in the description to Chris if you wanna reach out and get a quote, get a turnaround time for a service, for uh, some modding, for a regulation, repair, whatever it is. Um, he is one of the good ones. So. He is always busy. That's that's a mark of a very good watchmaker is they're busy, but he does good work. He has fair pricing and all of that contact information is in the description. Now, just in closing, I want to share just a couple thoughts about this Seamaster and uh, not necessarily a review, but just a few things that I'm impressed with. Now, this is a watch that I've owned, at least I owned a variation of it several years ago. I owned the quartz version 
this one is obviously not the quartz version. The, this is the Cal 1120, which essentially is the ETA 2892A2. Very nice movement, very thin as well. And that's one of the reasons why Omega can make this so thin and trim. And that's one of the things that I miss about the Seamaster is how wearable and how comfortable this watch used to be. The new version is still beautiful, it's still wearable, it is still comfortable, but it's not at the same level as this original Bond era case from the 1990s is. I mean, this thing is sweet in its design language, so thin and trim, proportional, and I kind of miss this case size and proportions. And I think this one, especially the electric blue with the wave dial, this is one of those underrated versions that will go up in collectability in future years, in my opinion. Most people are drawn to the classic Bond version or the black dial, black bezel version. So this one is a bit eccentric, right? With the polished bezel, with the vivid electric blue, with the sword hands. But I, I think this one is gonna be a great one to have in the collection in future years. I do think this will be a collectible with the five link Speedmaster uh, bracelet style. You guys can see the same style of bracelet is on this. And I love the luminescence here. This is printed C3 and it is very potent, very impressive, and kind of uh, reminds you that this is a tool watch. This is a watch made to be used and worn and uh, used in the ocean, used in dark scenarios, and I, I think this is just a, a great piece. So Robert, I'm happy for you. I'm glad you got the problem fixed. I think you have a great watch. It's nice that you have, you know, all of the stock, you know, the rubber strap, the service box, everything associated. You have the history with this watch, and you have a great piece. So I'll be sending this back to you. I know you're anxious to get it back on wrist. Thanks for uh, allowing me to film the process and document this with everyone watching this video. And uh, you know, I appreciate that. So guys, reach out with questions. Link to Chris's store is in the description of this video if you need a good watchmaker. And I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you in the next video.